Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here, coming at you from the Knife Center with Knife AQ number 83. The Knife series where I answer all your questions, whether they're sharp or dull. And this week, with Father's Day a week away, it's time we take a look at a few questions asking about our dear old dads. Let's check them out. All right, welcome, as I said, to Knife AQ, the knife series where folks just like you leave your questions down in the comments section below, and we pour through and pull out a few to answer in future episodes. So if you want a chance to have your question featured, do that. Leave it down in the, in the comments below, and we'll go through. First question today comes from Mitchell Baker. Uh, Hello, Knife Center crew. I'm looking for a hardworking, quote, around the yard fixed blade for my dad's 60th. He lives in the woods and is always messing around in the yard. I was thinking of something with handmade flair, even if it is mass produced, but still able to be beat upon. Uh, Something around $350, please and thanks. Sure thing. Now, one thing uh, I'll note you didn't quite mention is the specific uses that he's, uh, or the specific tasks he might be using beyond just kind of messing around. Uh, So for me at least, I'll usually have, you know, a folder on me. And if I'm kind of messing around in the yard, it's usually for me gonna be a larger knife, maybe a machete, maybe a chopper. Uh, So the first thing I'm gonna show you is gonna be along those lines, but thanks for uh, for picking a, a really healthy budget to work with here because there is a lot of cool stuff in that price range. And this is kind of a genre and price or an area of use and price that we don't often look at. So it's a good excuse to look at some cool stuff. So the first thing I'll show you is a really cool larger knife made by Fox. This is the MB, rather boringly named perhaps, but a pretty cool knife. Comes in about $280, so even under that 350. Uh, For that, in a way, you can kind of maybe think of this as kind of like a drop point buoy knife for the outdoors. Might be stretching that a little bit, but this is a knife with a seven and a quarter inch blade, Nylox steel, and just a very useful shape. It's fairly thick too. I mean, we're coming in, gosh, is that almost a quarter inch? What are we dealing with here? 0.2 inches. Yeah. Plenty of strength right there. Not too super heavy though. Yeah, you're going to be able to chop with this, but it balances out pretty well. I mean, the balance point is right in front of where your index finger sits. So it's not too, or it's not so forward heavy that you can't use it for some smaller needs if you need to as well. Handles, here's where it gets really cool. We've got a black burlap micarta and a couple of flared tubes for the attachment. And I wanted to stick with something that could be conceivably a handmade knife, even though this is a, uh, a production knife. Didn't want to have any kind of like bolt-on scales here. That, that doesn't feel handmade to me. These look really good. They feel very comfortable in the hand as well. And sheath wise, I got a lot of sheaths over here because if you've noticed, there's a lot of fixed blades on the table, which makes me a happy boy. Uh, And sheath wise, we've got a very nicely done leather sheath, retention strap, the edges are all softened over, very nicely done. Now, if something large like this isn't quite what you're thinking, maybe you want a uh, an easier to carry belt knife. I do have some options here as well. Uh, some other very nice pieces. First from White River. Uh, and I kind of leaned, or the, the things kind of, I kind of leaned towards more hunting style knives for these smaller belt knives. This is the Jerry Fisk designed Sendero Classic. This one comes in about 325. And it's a little bit thinner here, uh, 4.5 inches of S35 VN, maybe not quite an eighth of an inch thick. Uh, judging just based off of my eyeballs there. So, and it has a nice distal taper too. This thing gets narrower towards the tip. This thing's a little bit more about precision, maybe a little bit less about beating on, like you mentioned, but still a very impressive and impressively built knife too. Uh, S35VN, like I mentioned, burlap micarta handle with a hidden tang and the finger guard there out of, I believe this is stainless steel. I don't think it's nickel. It might be nickel though, I'm not sure. Fantastic all around hunting food prep blade, maybe a little bit as well. And just so, so cool. I I can never show enough White Rivers, which uh, 
is a shame because they, they always seem to be selling out of them. So I don't always get to show them. Uh, leather sheath as well with just a classic folded over loop for the snap. There we go. Definitely a worthy piece and a thing that could be kind of an heirloom knife as well. Uh, the other option is also kind of a hunting esque knife coming in at about 360. And this is definitely something you can beat on the Winkler knives, blue Ridge Hunter. Very cool. Uh, four and a quarter inch blade, 80 CRV two, very tough forged carbon steel and just such a cool shape overall. We've got a blackened kind of Caswell finish here to keep the glare down. Hardwood handles with a tribal inlay. I think they call this the tree. Yeah, tribal pattern inlay. Black pins and black lanyard tube kind of melt away and, and stay hidden. This is like the most rugged version of an old school trade knife that you can get nowadays. It almost feels like it was made over hot coals in a campfire. Super rugged, tons of character and super strong as well. Feels great. And I'm not sure what percentage of, uh, of this knife is done by hand versus other methods, but there's certainly a lot more handcrafted details on this than the uh, full production knives we just looked at. And you can even see that from some slight imperfections, slight irregularities that give it a little bit more character and just make it feel awesome. The other cool thing that might be good about this knife for your dad in particular, as I rifle through the sheaths at my side again, is that sheath. It's very interesting looking for a leather sheath, almost clicks in. It's not kydex, it's just very nicely formed. And on the back, we have a plate with two J hooks here. So this could be easier to get on and off a belt without actually taking the belt off. If he's you know, going out to mess around in the yard for a little bit, he can slap that onto the belt, comes inside, take it right back off and you're good to go. Check those out. I think those are all three gonna be pretty good options. And what the heck, I got a couple more over here because uh, you know, I'm a fixed blade freak and I kept bringing more out, but I didn't wanna overload the table, but you're getting the bonus picks anyway. Just real quick, the Felic Neven J, or sorry, SK1 Jarl. Really cool knife, 350 bucks, curly birch handle, convex geometry. Put that over here. And another convex knife, the Blackjack Classic Model 125. How cool is that? 300 bucks or 295 for this one right in here with Micarta handles, end cap and bolster, convex grind here as well, A2 steel, super cool. Now, for some of you folks out there who might not have the budget of this round $350 thing, but still want kind of an outdoorsy knife that feels special and has kind of handmade vibes, even if it's mass produced, something here that definitely deserves a look is this knife, the Hunt and Fish by Larry Fisher from CRKT, $85 knife. And this has features on it that you usually only see on more high end and more handmade knives. I mean, the vibes of this are straight up custom knife. We've got a three inch blade, eight CR series stainless steel, but that is the last spec that I'm going to mention that doesn't feel custom. Check out the rest of this. We have G10 handles with three mosaic pins. Very cool. We've got two sections of jimping and file work here on the spine. Very cool. And speaking of the spine, we even have that tapered tang. At this price range, I'm not sure of another tapered tang fixed blade on the uh, production level that you're gonna see right now with a tapered tang like that. Very, very cool. It's comfortable in the hand. The shape is just right. It's not as big as some of these other beaters that we uh, just took a look at for sure, but it's a solid companion knife, perfect little size for a hunter or just that, you know, a, a replacement for a pocket knife if you don't want something that folds. And then the sheath on for this knife is actually pretty cool. Check that out, tooled leather, and not just on one side either, all the way around and on the belt loop, which is set up for horizontal carry probably you're going to want this want to carry this in a cross draw configuration. Tell me that doesn't feel way more high end than any $85 you're going to be able to spend right now on anything else. Truly is something that could be treasured for many, many years to come. Very cool. Again, though, I don't know what your dad is doing there out there in the yard, just messing around. 
these knives are certain, certainly going to be fun to mess around with in any case. So hope that helps. Next question comes from Grease Pipe. Uh, Hi DC, I'm looking for a new knife to buy for my dad as a gift. He doesn't know much about knives and tends to really misuse them, so it needs to be tough. Message received. Uh, he also really likes serrations on his current carry, so something with the option of partial serrations would be great. And I'm not too sure if he cares much about the length, but something in the three to three and a half inch range would be ideal. And 150 bucks is kind of my budget right now, but I'd be willing to go a bit over. I'll keep you within that 150 bucks. Um, for something with partial serrations in that price range made in the USA, there's actually not a lot. Um, so I'm gonna go with one of the good options that there that does exist, the Benchmade Barrage, 148.50 right now. 2.91 inches on the blade. So you're gonna get at that more or less three inch mark. 154 cm steel, excellent all around drop point blade shape with a flat grind and partial serrations. And even though it's on the smaller side, I do think of this knife as fairly tough. The axis lock there is a tough lock and the handle is not super skinny. It's got enough girth there. Even if your hands are slightly larger than average like mine, you can still get all four fingers on that handle and a nice solid grip thanks to the shape and the thickness of it. Very cool knife. Ambidextrous of course, thanks to that axis lock and the reversible clip and an extra spine mounted safety because this is after all an assisted opening knife, which for someone like your father who, let me, let me get to the, uh, the verbiage right, who says he doesn't know much about knives. A lot of enthusiasts nowadays tend to shy away from assists in general, but they do still hurt, hold kind of a certain mystique for, shall we say non knife people. It's like, ooh, it's almost like a switchblade. And of course, it's still a reliable knife, no matter how you slice it. <laughs> I don't think I've ever made that joke before. I'm sure you have. Well, it's a Father's Day episode, so dad jokes are kind of well, you know, required. Le legally, you're allowed to do that now. Uh, <laughs> I do that, I end up on a watch list. You're already on several watch lists, I think, my friend. <laughs> What's one more? That's why I don't show up in the videos. <laughs> <laughs> There's the secret. The secret has been revealed. Uh, so that's a really cool option. If you do want something larger, maybe you're, you're thinking that's not quite there, I do have a, uh, an option here for you. It's not going to be U.S. made, however... But it is, I think, an almost criminally underrated knife right now. It was released this year, so maybe it's just still building traction, but the Steel Will Warbot is very cool. Uh, regular price is just over 100 bucks right now. We've actually got this on sale uh, for about 80 for a limited amount of time at the very least. D2 steel, three and a half inches, and a little bit thick. So this can be, this is a knife that can be kind of pounded on a little bit maybe treated with a little uh, bit of indiscriminate use. G10 handles, glass breaker there on the end, deep carry clip, which is reversible, nice metal, and I think it's steel, I'm not sure, but a metal backspacer there for more rigidity. And another nice thing for non-knife folks, especially, knife folks will love this, certain knife folks will love this too, but we have washers in the pivot, bronze washers as opposed to ball bearings. So for someone who might not realize that ball bearings might need a little extra care to keep clean, don't have to worry about the, that here. And yet it still flips like a treat. Solid, hardworking, tactical knife. Some folks might say, oh, it's a liner lock. It can't be hard use. I don't necessarily buy into that argument. A, a well-made liner lock can certainly stand up to some hard use. This knife just feels super solid. You can choke up on it a little bit if you want. You can get it in a plain edge too for folks out there who might not be interested in the combo edge version, but definitely check this knife out. It's one of those things where in pictures it might not kind of fully communicate what's going on, but as soon as you hold it in your hands, it's a knife that is definitely impressive. All right, next question comes from Hogsy. Uh, hey DCA, I've been looking into purchasing a reliable knife to gift my dad for Father's Day. Perfect timing. Uh, I'm looking for a real workhorse that will be great for use in a wet outdoor environment, yet elegant enough for use in the kitchen. Ideally, under $80 would be great. Any suggestion? Okay, this one, because you threw the word elegant in there, was actually quite difficult to hit. And I'm not quite sure I've managed to hit the, the outdoor and elegant kitchen to get, well, we'll say outdoor, kitchen, and elegant. I'm gonna say there are three, uh, three things there. I'm not quite sure I've, I've hit all of them well enough. 
I think I have a decent set of uh, selections here, but that's where I'm going to call on our friends in the comments section for some more suggestions. So keep that in mind. Uh, you didn't mention fixed blade or folder. So I'm going to give you both for a fixed blade or sorry for a folder. I'm going to go with the spider co resilience. Definitely a hardworking knife. Again, liner lock here, but it is made well. Uh, 66 bucks for this one right here. For the wet outdoor environment, I would actually go personally with the lightweight version that comes with the uh, injection molded scales with extra texture. But I went with the G10 here to lean into a little more, a little more elegance. It's G10 by itself is not necessarily elegant per se, but it's certainly more elegant than plastic. So that's why we're going with the G10 here. Uh, 66 bucks for this, a few bucks less for the FRN version. Four position pocket clip and the blade right here, four and a quarter inches, eight CR stainless, full flat grind. I haven't used one of these personally in the kitchen, but I have used the Tenacious, the smaller uh, brother to this knife. And the blade is wonderful at cutting through stuff like potatoes and onions. Any, like, it's kind of like a kitchen knife grind in a way when you look at this blade. And it's going to certainly translate well with this bigger size. You don't have kind of a drop to the edge to do like chopping cuts, but you do have a nice angle to the blade combined with this belly that's that lets you put a lot of slicing edge to use when working on a cutting board, which is quite nice. And the kind of clean black with bright, shiny accents in stainless steel all around certainly has a bit of classiness to it, if not outright elegance. But I think this would be a really nice choice in your price range. Uh, moving over to fixed blade, because I'm a fixed blade freak, I have more fixed blade options here. Uh, my first choice for this kind of price range for an outdoor knife that is going to work well in the kitchen too. I really like stuff like the Revo Journey, the RJ1. It's like 8750, so it's a little more expensive, but this doesn't nail the elegant. Bolt on scales never say elegant to me, but it's a great shape. Just under four inches on the blade, fantastic geometry for kitchen stuff and a nice orientation or relationship to the handle to be able to put all of its edge to good use on a surface like a cutting board. Very cool. Uh, another knife that's a little more expensive uh, out above your price range, uh, about 93 bucks. The Joker Montanero, I think is a fantastic outdoor knife that could translate well to the kitchen. 4.3 inch blade Sandvik 14 C 28 N stainless super grippy micarta handles. I think there's a bit of classiness to this personally, not, uh, not super fancy, but I think it has some nice vibes. But again, a little beyond your price range too that you were looking for. Still a good choice, I think. But keeping it down right where we want to be. Uh, I'm going to show this knife, the G10 handled contoured handled version of the Civivi Elementum fixed blade. Regular price is about 85. But right now Civivi is actually doing a Father's Day sale. It should be running. So I'm not sure how far it's running. We'll try and put the dates up there in the corner, Thomas, if we can. But they're doing a Father's Day sale on a lot of stuff. And this knife right now is about $75. And I think this one nails the elegant factor. It does have G10, but it's contoured and polished up to a nice finish. Works really nicely with the red liners and the red surrounds to those classy pins right there. And it feels very good in the hand too. The blade is maybe a little less optimized for kitchen use. It's about a four inch long uh, drop point in 10 CR stainless, solid stuff and kind of a jack of all trades, master of none blade shape on a, uh, a fixed blade like this is the way I've always considered this knife. It's not quite a hunter, not really a bush crafter, but it'll do both of those things in a pinch. It'll do camp stuff. Well, it'll do some food prep stuff. Well, although with the hollow grind there again, it's not not ideal for that specifically, but it's going to do it all nicely. And it's definitely, I think, nailing the elegant factor. Uh, and then this sheath, this sheath was wrapped in plastic. So I did leave it in the box, but it is a nice kind of classic uh, black leather pouch. I think it's going to work really well. But again, I'm not 100% satisfied with any of these answers that I've put out here for for you. So comment section, chime in, let me know your thoughts. Again, keep the price range in mind, but we'll definitely take suggestions outside the price range too, just for kicks. Um, but I hope this helps. Next question comes from uh, GTV or Sixer. 
GTI VR Sixer. We'll go with that. Um, DCA. With Father's Day approaching, my dad is not a complete knife nut like myself, but he has carried pocket knives off and on. He mostly uses a foldable utility knife, and I want to get him something to replace that, preferably USA made. I've been looking at the Spyderco Delica Warncliffe, which is of course Japanese made, but I'm wondering what else I could be looking at in the same style and price range. Thanks. Uh, so here's your Delica Warncliffe right here. Fantastic utility shape overall. Uh, these days runs about $88. And for a US made knife, with the right kind of blade shape and enough handle to, to get a good grip on, at least the way I'm envisioning as a uh, kind of utility knife replacement, I'm not really finding anything in that price range. So I'll give you two options here. I'll give you a US made option and then another option inside your price range. Uh, for the US made, I've got to go with the Hogue Deca with the modified Warncliffe blade. Hogue is also right now doing a Father's Day promotion where a lot of their stuff is on sale, including this knife center exclusive of the Deca coming in right now at about 138. Uh, regular price is about 157. So if you act quickly, you can get a pretty decent discount on this knife. Really great blade shape, 20 CV American made steel, tons of edge retention, stone washed finish, which is quite nice. And the red G Mascus G10 scales. And the crossbar lock, Hogue's Able Lock is super smooth, super fidgety, super strong, works easily in either hand. Just a solid, solid carry piece right here. And it's got the right kind of blade that could kind of conceivably take the place of a utility knife. You've got that tip to work with, that straight edge along the bottom, gonna be great for cutting and scraping tasks like so. For a more affordable option, I'm actually gonna go way more affordable uh, than your $88. In fact, you could almost get three of these knives for it. Maybe get a matched one for you and your pops. This is the QSP Penguin. $32.66 right now for this D2 bladed sheep's foot folder. Cool brown uh, micarta handles on this one too. Liner lock, washers in the pivot. Again, something that is really good for the non-knife folks out there especially. The same is true of that Hogue, no ball bearings in that pivot. This guy still flicks open really nice, so you uh, knife nuts out there definitely appreciate this knife. We've got a deep carry pocket clip, which is of course reversible, and the same great style of utility replacement shape. Works great. Aggressive cuts through boxes, using that tip to cut out shapes, score through things, super solid. and. In the price range, I mean, we're talking, like I said, 32 bucks for this right now. Fit and finish doesn't get much better than QSP. What they're doing truly outshines uh, the uh, prices you're going to pay for them. So maybe inexpensive, but gift it to your old man and he's not gonna think it's an inexpensive product. Really well put together. All right, now we come to the lightning round for today. And Josh H says, uh, if you had to choose one knife to be stuck on an island with, which would it be? So assuming, I'm assuming you're talking about desert island uh, or tropical island, and rather than go into like the desert island knife, what's the, uh, the sentimental thing that I would have to have with me? You gotta survive here. And although I have a mostly academic knowledge on a lot of different survival-ish things, and I've practiced some of those things out in the, uh, the bush or in the woods as well, never actually had to survive. But if I had to, I would pick a 12 inch machete for that type of environment and many others because a 12 inch machete is probably one of the most well-rounded tools you can pick for a survival option. If you don't, especially if you don't know kind of where you might end up with a thing, this covers so many bases. And I wanna show one here that's, it doesn't always get as much love. This is the Sword Kiwi Machete, 12 inches, carbon steel blade. And the reason I think it might get overlooked sometimes, it's not inexpensive, it's like 73 bucks and you're getting a polypropylene handle but it is quite comfortable, but the blade is actually pretty special. It's carbon steel, ground by hand, differentially heat treated as well. So you've got a softer spine and a harder edge. So you've got a feature you don't see too often in machetes, especially in this price range. Uh, see any, on anything in this price range, I should say. You've got a convex grind, quite sharp out of the box, a little rough around the edges, maybe fit and finish wise, but that's kind of always Ford's kind of 
vibe, but it feels super good. It hits really nicely and it deserves some more love. Sheath is even pretty cool too. It's leather on the outside. It's got some kind of like webbing, almost like a canvas uh, hose there on the inside, but it holds the, uh, holds the machete quite nicely. 12 inch machete. I forget who it was who told me, uh, who, who kind of communicated the idea of it, of the 12 inch machete being one of the best survival tools of all time. But I really took it to heart. It, it really, it makes a lot of sense. So there we go. Next up, Kevin says, I wonder why knife makers don't make ferrocerium handles. Seems like a good idea. So you'd always have extra ferro rod fire making capability on hand. I can think of so many ways that would be problematic. Um, it's a cool idea at first, but that would complicate any kind of complex shapes. I mean, if you were to stick ferrocerium under a CNC router, have that thing come down, you're showering sparks across the factory floor. I'd like to see it. Oh, I kind of would too, but I wouldn't like that'd be bad. And also like you've got a nice comfortable knife and then you go scraping bits off to start a fire. I like it, but there's a lot, a lot more simple ways to make sure you've got some fire making material on you, fire making stuff on you. Um, ooh, I didn't have a good answer, I guess, but it, it was, I don't, I don't know. I don't know why I put that, that one in here this time. I'd sooner seen a, a Zippo in a handle. You got little uh, ferro rod inserts, perhaps. Yeah, maybe an insert. You could do flat scales with a ferro with ferrocerium, but yeah, anything with any kind of shape like this would just be so problematic. And can you imagine like dropping it onto the wrong surface and all of a sudden sparks fly from when you drop your knife? Oh, well, you'd know where it landed. Maybe. <laughs> all right. Now Chris says, "Hey, I'd love to see that Tramontina machete with denim, denim micarta that you were talking about." Okay, I'll show it to you. Because all my knives right now are packed up in here at the office, I had access to this. He's referring to a machete I made or that I put my homemade quote unquote denim micarta on, and this is it. You can also see my first attempt at a Kydex sheath right here as well. And here we're getting beyond light, lightning round here. This is going a little slow, but it's okay. Check out the handiwork there, huh? This was many, many years ago, and I'm certainly a lot better now. The Dremel kind of took it and took off with it. But anyway, it still works, which is all we need. This is a Tramontina machete. Originally had wood handles. I broke the wood handles because I don't even remember exactly why. And so I had to make something new. And I used an old pair of blue jeans and fiberglass resin to make quote unquote Micarta, which is of course a brand name. So it's not actually Micarta. And it came out okay, quite honestly, surprisingly decent. You can see the contouring here and I did all of this shaping in my bedroom in the apartment I was li living in at the time with a Dremel. Would not recommend. It's very good for your lungs. Clearly. <laughs> did some stupid stuff when I was younger. But if that's one of the dumber things I've done, then I'm actually I'm probably okay than a lot of folks out there. This thing still works great. And I have used the heck out, out of it, as you can see. Great thing about this is it's one of those indiscriminate tools. I take care of it, but I don't have to keep it pristine. You can see it's been sharpened a fair bit. You can see that was the original edge here continued and it's come in a bit because I've used it quite extensively. Still very comfortable in the hand, maybe a little too round. It might be a little rolly in the hand. It might not uh, stay straight up and down uh, quite as effectively as if I were redoing the handle today. Here's one of the funny things. I tried to attach the uh, each side with Chicago screws on either side, which first of all is not really a suitable handle attachment piece of hardware. And they also, I had a hard time getting them to actually connect. So there wasn't a lot of connection, but between the Chicago through screws and the epoxy I used, it's been stable enough. And I filled the holes in with uh, JB weld. There you go. Thoughts, ladies and gentlemen. It certainly doesn't look like much, but it works. Hey, it's the Millennium Falcon. Doesn't look like much, but it's got it where it counts and it still works like a charm. So there you go. Works a little better than the Millennium Falcon. I think broke down all the time. Also, this is real. Is it? <laughs> Maybe. Well, now we come to our most serious question of the day, which comes from Dean C. If a woodchuck could chuck wood, what knife would the woodchuck chuck wood with? 
Well, I'd say if a woodchuck could chuck wood, then a woodchuck would chuck as much wood as a woodchuck could chuck using a case woodchuck. And I have one in front of me. We have a picture up here. That's the answer. And did you really think we could get through a Father's Day episode of Knife AQ without a case knife? We hey. wouldn't. Good one. Anyway, that's all we've got for today, folks. Thanks for your questions, as always. Keep them coming down there in the comments section, and maybe you'll see it featured in a future episode. If you want to pick up one of these knives for yourself or your old man, there will be, there will be links in the description to take you over to KnifeCenter.com. And as always, don't forget about our Knife Rewards program, because when you're buying one of these knives, you might as well be earning some free money back to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center. That's Thomas behind the camera. We're signing off. See you next time.